Uh, hello, everybody. Okay, so uh, I am joined today. Oh, Quinn is here. I'm joined today by Quinn and Bagels and um, Brawlbox. And together hello. we are going to implement some souvenir support for some models. I think I want to turn off those notifications. Uh, that was here, wasn't it? Yeah, that one. Uh, let's uh, off that. Save. Right, thank you. Okay, hello, Ardzainu, 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 I don't know how to pronounce this, Ardzainu. Um, yeah, uh, you're not nobody, that is absolutely correct, Bagels, you are now in the list. Okay, so anyway, hello everybody, welcome, and I'm gonna dive straight in. We have our wheel, which I'm just gonna spin, and I hope that you can hear the sound when I do so. In fact, I should probably press this to make sure that you do, and let's go. Our first module today is module listening. All right, let's take a look at the manual for this. So this is the interactive manual. So we have a module which has four buttons on it and each of those buttons plays a sound from a specific module. So this is actually kind of, not kind of, quite similar in fact to listening, except that with listening, we're only asking for the code that was entered. But for this one, we can ask for the module name of, uh, that the sounds came from. Uh, furthermore, the module has four buttons in different colors, which are in different orders. So I need to begin by checking whether the colors on the buttons uh, change, uh, that, sorry, disappear after the module is solved. So I'm quickly going to do that. I'm opening the LFA. I'm going to make sure that I'm actually subscribed to module listening. I should probably have done that before starting the game, but I can check this here now. Let's see, we want module listening. Okay, we are subscribed, so I'm gonna start a Zen mode bomb. Don't need that anymore, but I do wanna upload my log file. Let's do this. Okay, we have the module here. So right now it's green, red, uh, yellow, blue. This log file is not empty, there you go. It says that up here. Okay, now the final submission code. Let's put that in. Let me uh, make this smaller so that I can more easily just read it off of there. There you go. Okay, so our submission code is backslash underscore at sign less than percent. I'm not quite sure what that sound was. I don't know if you guys heard that. And there's another ding sound. Oh, I see. It's after each uh, module code that it does a ding sound. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Oh, that's, I didn't even notice that these LEDs uh, lit up. Um, okay, so we have a less than percent open parenthesis. Ah, the buttons are still there they're in the colors that they were. Um, Regardless, we can ask two different types of questions. We can ask what module sound was played by the first button, second, third, fourth, and what was played by the green button, red, blue, yellow. So I think I'm going to do both. Okay, so let's get started. So here is our souvenir source code, and we're going to start with this. Uh, it's under Mo. We already have module maze here, so we're just going to add that right above it. Uh, called model listening. Now for this string here, we need to know the uh, uh, the module ID. So I'm going to look at module listening here. I'm going to show the module ID and it is this. Case sensitivity is... Okay, module listening is already there and I didn't even see that. Aha! Module listening is already implemented. What questions does it ask? Which module did the sound played by the color button belong to? Okay, so it only asks about the colors. Well, if this is already implemented, then I'm just gonna move on to the next one. So this was uh, module listening. So let's put that here. Um, so these are done, but I still need to add them to the manual. So I'm just uh, reminding myself of that. So let's spin the wheel again. And sorry about that waste of time. Here we go. Just spin one for me as well. Sorry, what did you say? Could you spin one for me as well? Ah, of course. Okay. 
So mine landed on multicolored switches, if I'm not mistaken. So I guess I'm going to be doing that. And James would like to implement one in the background. So we're going to spin the wheel again for him. I forgot to remove multicolored switches from the wheel. But we have exoplanets. Do you want to do exoplanets? Sure, I'll give it a look. Okay. I'm going to look at... Uh, uh, what did I say? Multicolored switches. That's the one. Multicolored switches. Okay, so this is the. Uh, let's go back to here. Multi. Okay, that one's definitely not there yet. Multicolored switches, and I forgot to put that here. Const string. Well, multicolored switches equals that. OBS Studio just told me something, and it it disappeared too quickly for me to see. Did anyone see what was there? There was a warning from OBS and I can't tell what it was. Um, is the warning displayed here anywhere? Uh, this is annoying. I hate this when this happens. It just disappears and then it's never to be seen again. I'm gonna try and continue. Okay, so multicolored switches gets its own process method and now let's so take encoding a I'm oh, sorry go go on um, but the error said encoding overload consider turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset can you say that a bit slower please uh, hang on I'll just give you a screenshot okay that is a good idea all right let's look at multicolored switches I actually remember rewriting this manual myself there were some complaints that this manual was unclear. So I need to figure out uh, which information on multicolored switches is still visible after solve. Um, let me know when you have that information there, James. Okay, multicolored switches. Um, James, are you okay with me uh, looking at your DM? Sure. It was okay. just the, the picture. Though. Yes. Uh, encoding overloaded. Consider turning down video settings or using a faster encoding preset. I have no idea how this... Um, yeah, I, I don't know what to do about that. I'm, I'm not very good with, you know, video encoding stuff. The stream looks fine, so I wouldn't worry about it too much. Let's see if it still looks fine if I stay in the game for too long, because I suspect that maybe the game is using resources. But anyway, let's take a look at this. So the sequence of flips is 2154, apparently. Right. Oh, okay. The LEDs turn off. Eventually. Okay. Let's, let's run this again with multiple modules so that... Um, I can be sure that it's not solving the bomb that did that. So let's just add uh, some simpletons here. And now the sequence of flips is 512. Exactly all of the turquoise ones. Okay, so apparently the LEDs do turn off eventually. So that's fine then, so I guess I don't need to do this. Okay. So let's actually dive in. We have we, we have a method to write, which is a private ienumerable object that KMBOM module module. Okay, and I'm gonna quickly <clears throat> copy some lines from here. Okay, so now this needs to be the class name. So we're gonna take a look at the source code now. Let me actually see if I happen to have. Um, uh, multicolored switches. No, I do not. Okay, so we are going to clone that. Clone this to multicolored switches. Um, and then let's open that in Unity. Open multicolored switches. And I'm also going to open a new uh, Visual Studio. And then hopefully here, some files will appear. 
when this is done loading. Okay, so while this is loading, I suppose I can um, look through the uh, version on GitHub, because I'm sure there is a .cs file here, multicolored switches, um, public class switch, public struct LED. There we go, multicolored switches is the name of the type. And it has a capital C that is important. It needs to match exactly. Let's see if we have a bool solved. Let's look for handle pass. There you go. Solved equals true. Let's see if that's public. It is not public. That is good. It's not supposed to be public. Um, so that's that. And then we can just say while uh, while that is not yet solved, we're going to wait for 0.1 of a second. OK. Now. Uh, I wanted to open, it's, it hasn't created these yet. Okay, if I double click this, it will open Visual Studio 2019, the old version. So I'm gonna immediately close it again and then open this in here. Uh, there we go, this is what I wanted. This can now be closed. I thought I already closed that. Okay. Go away. Okay, so now we have our multicolored switches right here. Okay. So, um, what what are we going to ask about? We're only going to ask about the LED colors. We're not going to ask about the switch colors or the socket colors. Not just because they don't disappear, because you know we could have souvenir make them disappear. But in the case of switches, which look like physical objects, you don't really want them to like abruptly change color. You know, it just doesn't make logical sense. It makes sense for the LEDs to turn off. So I'm going to um, ask only about the LED colors. Now, I suspect that these um, store the right materials, which is a bit inconvenient because I would have preferred for there to be numbers. Ah, nope, that's, um, hang on. Right, okay, let's see where this is used. Um, okay, so this is applied here. Um, okay, so wh where is this actually? Oh, I see, it's right here. Okay, LED colors. That is a material. Oh, I see. Um, okay, so what the author does here is for two iterations, which is the two rows of LEDs on the module, uh, they um, decide on a random number here and then assign specific colors based on the, oh, there we go, char color one. Okay, we can use this. Ah, we could even use, okay. This is for the red, green, blue component decomposition, but whatever. Okay, so this is the material, this is the character for the color. Okay, so that means we need to look at, oh, this is not a field. I expected this to be a field. So let's take a look where that uh, variable is eventually placed. Bingo, LEDs up. Okay, let's take a look at that. That is in fact a field. Okay, so this is what we're going to look at. We're going to find LEDs up, which is an array. Uh, so let's go to our souvenir here. Right, we want our LEDs up, which is an array. There you go. And then we want LEDs down, which has that name. And both of these are, no, they are not public. They are private. So we're going to leave it. OK. So after the module is solved, let's, let's see where this has changed. Like, OK, it's only ever assigned the LED color. So they. Uh, the author did not make this go black at the end of the sort. They only make the materials go black, which is what they should do. But this variable will still contain the information that we need. Therefore, I will just obtain this information upon solve. So var LEDs up equals FLD LEDs up dot get. And we expect this array to have a length of exactly five. If it is not equal to five, then I'm going to say expect length five, otherwise null. Okay, then we do the same with LEDs down. This one. Um, right, now these arrays contain these LED objects, which, uh, you know, I don't have direct access to the type, 
but I can get the fields in this type. And the fields that I'm interested in are char color one and char color two. Okay, so um, var up colors. Hang on, why? Hmm. Oh, I see, because it cycles between two different states. So I'm guessing that this is the one for when the tiny LED is on and this is off or vice versa. And we'll figure out which is which. So the up colors are going to be innumerable range 0 to 5. In fact, let's get the fields first. So I want the char color 1 field, which is this one, from LEDs up 0. That will just give us some object. Uh, and we want to get a field of type char from this object by the name of that. Uh, somebody is not muted. I think it's Brawlbox. Um, thank you. Okay, color two. Um, okay, I'm not quite sure why it's complaining about this one. Ah, okay, I see. Because array is this um, abstract base type, I need to use get value. I can't use the square brackets. Okay, so this will retrieve some random LED object, which we only need in order to retrieve the actual field. And now we can iterate through the number 0 to 5 to obtain all of the uh, char color 1 and char color 2. So the up colors are going to be for each index. We are going to get this, but we get the value from um, LEDs up get value i. So LEDs up get value i will give us the ith value from this, sorry, from from this array, right? And then this will give us one of these objects. And then within that object, we're going to get the value of FLD char color one, which, which will give us this, and that will be a character. All right, now I want both characters, so I'm going to make this an array. I'm gonna have this one, and then I'm also going to have FLD char color two. And that is the end of the array, and then I make that into an array. Okay, and then we do the same with the down colors. So uh, LED is down. And now we have all of the colors. So what we should actually end up with is 20 colors, right? Because there are five LEDs up, five LEDs down, which is 10, and each of them cycles between two different colors. So we end up with 20. All right, now let's formulate a question that we can ask. This is for multicolored multicolored here m k l m n o p there we go multicolored switches led color so the question can be quite extensive uh, what color was the nth color what the nth led on the top or bottom row when the tiny led was lit or unlit in module name and the module name of course is multicolored switches uh, answer layout okay so the colors is going to be a small word so we're going to do we're going to have two columns instead of just one and the possible colors uh let's see um ah uh, yes of course it's going to be all eight of the possible combinations of the red green and blue channels uh, is there a full list of the colors here? No, unfortunately not. I'm just gonna grab this, you know. This is a bit, uh, bit of a trick here. Oh, come on. I can do this. And of course, I did like that, and then that, that, that. There you go. Okay. So we now have that, and then we put double quotes. There you go. And then we're gonna put that. Okay. So this will give us a list of colors. Um, I do kind of want to sort this uh, according to, you know what, I'm going to make this new lines again so I can reorder these more easily. So I'm going to have red, and then I'm going to have green, and then I'm going to have red and green, which is yellow. Then I'm going to be adding blue. Blue and red is magenta, blue and green is cyan, and then we have white. So now we're going to do this, we're going to have this array, and we're going to put that right here. Okay, so now this is our list of colors, and I'm going to lowercase all of these. Um, in here, 
Uh, I'm going to get the color names. I'm going to put those into an array like that. And then the color characters are just going to be uh, black, red, green, yellow, blue, magenta, cyan, white. I'm just going to assume that black is K. Uh, that seems like a reasonable assumption. And hopefully during testing, we will run into a bug if it is wrong. Okay, so I want to add some um, example format arguments. So, for example, what, what color was the uh, first LED on the top row when the tiny LED was lit is one possibility, right? And uh, this could be first, second, or third. And then we could have the same thing, but with the bottom LED instead of the top. And then we could have the same thing, but with lit replaced with unlit. There we go. Okay, so this is going to be a long-ish list. Uh, and then our example group size is three, because there are three strings per group. Okay, so much for that. Now, um, for each... Um, so we're either looking at the up colors or the down colors, right? So for like, okay, so this is, this is up or down. So if we are, let's, let's just do this. Then this is up colors, else down colors like that. And then, uh, for each cycle. So, um, yeah, so for each cycle, which of which there are two. So that is just going to index into this. And then for each LED. So var LED going from zero to five. We are going to ask a question and we need the uh, question to be in a list like this. So we're going to make a question. Uh, the question is for multicolored switches, LED color, module key is multicolored switches. Mo I typed that completely wrong. Um, format arguments. Okay, so we have three format arguments. The first one is the position of the LED. Let's do that one first. Let me actually put this in front so that I will know what this ar uh, array is for. I'm going to put this on a new line so it's easier to read. So the first one is the uh, position of the LED. So it's ordinal of LED plus one. And then the second one is going to be which row it is. So if uh, up, down equals zero, then it's the top row, else it's the bottom row. And then finally, uh, when the tiny LED was um, lit or unlit. Um, so we don't know whether, you know, which one is lit and which one is unlit. And we will... Um, we will examine that in testing. Okay, so these are the format arguments. Now, what are the correct answers? The correct answers are, of course, there's only one correct answer, which is the color name of uh, the correct color. And the correct color is in color chars, and we need to find the index of that. And the char is, of course, colors, which is a character array array. The inner array, the, the, the outer array is the LED index, and then the inner array is the cycle. Okay, so we close that. Now, why is it complaining? It's not complaining anymore. Very good. Okay, and then we just add these questions, questions for this module QS. Okay, not all of this needs the curlies, so I'm just going to remove some curlies here. Um, colors is really only used in one single place. So I'm actually going to inline this like that and then remove even more curlies. There you go. And then I'm going to try this out. I'm going to try this in game. Let's go. Uh, this is multicolored switches. I should compile souvenir. Um, I think we already established that I am subscribed to multicolored switches. So I guess I don't need to worry about that. Okay, I have some messages. Let's uh, run the compile here. Um, yes, uh, okay, so I see that some people realize that um, 
module listening was already um, supported. Yeah, okay. Okay. What would be an incorrect switch position in? Are you suggesting a different type of question that I could ask? I don't know. This I I prefer questions that ask about like what was literally on the module and just isn't visible anymore. You don't have to say top row, bottom row, and on off. I see. Oh, you're right. My new manual actually refers to them as set A B C D. Um, Depresso, I agree with you that I could do that, but I think I'm happy with it the way I did it. Um, because it's more, um, firstly, it's more direct about what was actually on the screen. And secondly, you know, if you only write down what set A, B, C, and D are, then this poses an additional challenge to figure out which is which. Which is not a huge challenge, right? It's not an arduous challenge because you can literally just look it up here, right? So if Souvenir asks about top row when the tiny LED is unlit, then you know it's set B. Okay, so let's try this out. We have multicolored switches and a souvenir. Uh, let's also add another simpleton just for good measure. And at this point, I don't need this to be tiny anymore. So I'm going to make it this size. Nope, that is too big. There you go. Okay, let's take a look at. So first of all, I'm going to take some screenshots here. So this is when the tiny LED is on. And this is when the tiny LED is off. Okay, um, let's take a look at the log now. This is it. And here we have the answer of one, two, five, four. Okay, there was an exception. All right, so let's open the same log file again and look at filtered log souvenir that. Okay, so what was the problem? Abandoning multicolored switches because you forgot to increment the solve count. I keep forgetting that. I'm so glad that I added this message. So what you have to do is you have to go with modules solved dot ink save. And then the key is, of course, multicolored switches. That one. There we go. This is what I wanted. And now we have to recompile this again. And then we run the game again. And I can get rid of these screenshots for now and I will make new ones. Um, okay, let's try this out. Here we have our DMG and we run the same bomb as last time. We open the LFA again and this is our module. Uh, this is when the LED is off. It's still off. And this is when it's on. There you go. P. Okay, that is our screenshots. The answer is uh, one, two, three. How convenient. And. Victory! What color was the fourth LED on the top row when the tiny LED was unlit? So this one here. Fourth LED on the top row was red. If this says green, then I got lit and unlit flipped but it was correct. All right, let's take a look at the um, complete list of uh, questions that Souvenir generated to see if they're all correct. So we have this. Let's also close the game. Okay, so we have this one. So this is when the tiny LED is unlit so all of these i guess and all of these so this is the top row the top row is white green black yeah this is clearly working perfectly right and then the uh bottom row here is black magenta white white yellow i probably don't need to look at the other one it's gonna be fine but just for good measure let's look at just the top row blue magenta magenta green yellow yep i am happy with this this is working 
So, multicolored switches is now... Um, where was it even? Ah, there it is. Is now on this list. And now, we spin the wheel. Okay, I need to make sure that I've removed it. I think I have. Okay, let's do that. Our next module is sync one, two, five, three. This is going to be a bit uh, difficult because for this one, I actually want to show these shapes. So I'm gonna have to, um, hmm, I, I would even have to, hang on. I'm gonna check the source code to see if this has a font, um, assets. Let's see. That is in fact a font. All right. Let's let's see if I'm. Nope. I do not have that. In which case, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go here and code and that. Get clone that to sync. Um, not quite sure what to call the folder here, but I'm just gonna call it that. Okay. Let's open this in Unity. Okay, so um, I guess I can close multicolored switches now and I can start my preparations for uh, sync one, two, five, three. So right here, MN. So it's going to go here. Um, I, I, I don't know what to call this. I'm just going to call it this. Uh, the module ID is that. And then down here, we're going to add the same thing with MN there, right here. Okay, sync that one, process, sync one, two, five, three. Honestly, not even sure what to call this. Okay, so let's go here. Innumerable object that can bomb module, module. And there we go. And I guess I can also copy that first line here. And this needs to be the name of the class, which as indicated here is this. I cannot select this. I don't care. There you go. I can type this up. All right. What I really wanted to check here was the font. So I'm just going to show this in Explorer and take a look at this. That looks promising. And then we have this one here that, ah, this, ah, this is the one used in the manual. And this is the one used on the display is what I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, let's actually open the scene here. Okay. Ah, I see. This is what the other font is used for, for this, this display up top which you don't need for solving the module. So I'm going to uh, ignore that. But uh, let's, uh, can I, was it? There, there we go. Okay, I wanted to take a look at this. This is the text object and it does indeed use that font. Okay, so in Souvenir, I can copy, well not copy, you know, I can, obtain a reference to this screen text object and retrieve the font reference and the font material reference. And that way I won't need to include the actual font in Souvenir, which up until now I've always done, like with, um, like with uh, Turtle Robot, for example. Maybe I should look into changing that so that Souvenir doesn't need to include the font itself. Let's try this. Um, as I say this, it just occurred to me that I don't actually have the infrastructure for that. But let's 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 do one thing at a time. So first of all, let's figure out where uh, the message that is shown on the display is actually uh, in the source code. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to open this. And this time, I'm not going to open it in Visual Studio 2019. Uh, I'm going to change this to the new version, which is in uh, in Visual Studio 2022, common IDE devenv.exe. Interesting, it knows what it's called. 
Ah, but it, okay, it doesn't let me make this bigger. Okay, so now if I double click here, we get the right Visual Studio. Very good. Any other comments? Multicolored is done indeed. Um, okay, so uh, these should these should really be uh, static and read only, but whatever. Okay, so when we initialize this, um, this is not where it decides on the maybe activate does randomize. That's probably it. Okay, text ID. Okay, so we decide on a text ID, which is an index into words. And then we add. What is text ID? Oh, wait, no, I can't write. What is text ID? It's currently zero. So this will initially never be zero. Uh, I think I see what's going on here. What's going on is that the author tried to make it so that it doesn't show the same word twice in the sequence. So the second time that this gets called, text ID will be the ID of the previous word. And if the new text ID is uh, less than that, then uh, I see if it is greater or equal to that, then we add one. And that way it will never be equal to text ID. So that's what this is trying to do. Um, unfortunately, no, not unfortunately, because this is a field. So I can just grab this information at each stage. So um, this is the first thing that we need. It's an int. So let's go here, um, var fld, what was it called? Text ID, I guess, equals get field. It's an integer from comp and it's called text ID. There we go. And then we also need to know which stage we're in. So I'm going to assume that int stage is it. Let me just quickly see what values this is going to have. OK, stage light. I see this actually increments uh, st, um, which means that this gets, ah, I see here, if stage is less than 3, then you advance to the next stage. So when stage is equal to 3, the module is solved. So it will do all of this to disappear stuff and then call handle pass. All right. So um, ah, I still need to check whether it reverts to an earlier stage if you get a strike. According to this, it's not looking like it. There is no code that I can see here that ever decrements stage or puts it back to zero. This seems to be the only line of code that ever changes it and it increments it. Uh, this one here, oh yeah, that's just for the um, uh, auto solver. Yeah, okay, so I think I can safely assume that the stage is always increasing. So the current stage is going to be zero, uh, and the, uh, the, the, the field where the stage is stored is called stage, right? It was called stage, and it's an integer, and it's not public. Right, let's put that here. Now, uh, while true. So um, we will wait in uh, increments of one frame. And at each frame, we will check whether the stage number has changed. In fact, I'm going to set this to minus one because that way it will look like it has changed at the start. So it will obtain the information for the first stage right away. So what is the information? The information is the text ID. So we actually want uh, an array of integers, and there are going to be three. So I expect there to be three stages. Okay, so if, um, okay, so uh, the, the next stage is going to be fld stage.get. Now we expect this value, this is an int, ah, I see, I should probably change this to get int field because then I have some extra methods that I can use. So now I can specify a minimum and a maximum that I expect. I expect a minimum of zero and a maximum of three. So it will output a readable, nice, informative error message when it's somehow out of range. If next stage is not equal to the next stage is not equal to the current stage, 
then we need to obtain the information. So text IDs at the new stage, uh, which is next stage, uh, is equal to, well, we just get the text ID from that field. And we expect this to be at least zero and at most this, the length of this array. So I think I'm going to obtain a reference to this array also. There are words and I don't need the field. I only need what's in it. This is a string array field, right? Yeah, so let's make that an array field of string. And it's called words and it's, it's not public, is it? No, it's not actually public, but I'm going to get the thing right here. And at this point, I only expect it to not be null. Everything else is fine. Like the author should be uh, perfectly um, free to change the length of this at any point in time. I'm suddenly wondering whether I might also ask about the translated words. That would actually solve the problem with the font that I was mentioning. But let's try to do the font things first. I just want to see if I can actually get through this. Okay, so we have our words. So I expect this text ID to be at most words.length minus one. Okay. And then, of course, uh, curve stage is equal to next stage. And then I'm going to say while uh, curve stage is less than three. So when curve stage is three, we expect the module to be solved. So I'm going to. Uh, increment this counter now, which I forgot last time. And we have our sync thing. Okay. Now I have uh, the indexes of the text uh, in words. You know what? I think because it's easy, I'm just going to get the translated words as well. Just because it's easy to do and it's going to line up with the IDs, which, yeah, basically. So let's go here. Let's formulate the questions. M N O P Q R S uh, S Yankee Sierra Yankee. This is where we are. M N. That should be here. Sync one two five three. Uh, I generally don't know what to call this. Uh, word. Um, souvenir question. What was uh displayed? on the screen in uh, stage one of that module. And the module name, I want to get this perfectly correct, is this. Yeah, that is perfectly correct, all right. Um, OK, this is going to be in uh, two columns, I guess. And I don't think I need a full list of them because I'm obtaining the full list from the module. All right, but I am going to put a uh, example, like, like example answers here. Okay, so the example answers are, um, I'm just, I'm just going to put the first 10 or so. Let's do that. Remove that new line and copy that. Okay, so this is the um, encrypted. It's, encrypted isn't really the right word, but you get the idea. Okay, now I believe that, okay. Ah, dynamic font. We have a dynamic font thing. This is what we want. Okay. Right, so that's for the words. And uh, what uh, word was uh, decoded from? the screen in stage thing. All right, so this is the translated word. Um, and then this is no longer a dynamic font. This is just standard. And the same examples that we had last time, except this time it's these. So let's put that there, remove that new line and auto format. OK, so now we have our two questions. We can. Um, we want to ask two questions for every stage, right? So we're going to have our questions uh, in a list. And then for each stage, so this is going to be stage. Um, 
Right, we're just gonna add, uh, I'm just gonna call add twice. So we are gonna make a question for sync uh, that, for the word, the module key is this. Um, and the format arguments are of course the stage number, which is ordinal of stage plus one. And the correct answer is um, words of uh, text IDs of stage. Okay, and the preferred wrong answers, which in this case is all wrong answers, is just words. So that's this one. And then we do the translated word, which is that. Format arguments are still the same. This is just going to be trans, and this is just going to be trans. Okay, and then we add these questions for this module, uh, QS. Okay, so we didn't actually specify the font. So let me quickly take a look at this, whether there is an overload here. Yes, there is an overload that takes a font and a font texture. So we need to obtain the font and the font texture from this module. I don't think that the font and font texture are right here in a field, but we do have the text mesh. Now, uh, digit text is the one where it shows like, like this one here, right? So um, screen text is probably the one that we want. And it turns out that both of these Oh, I see, they're both called screen text, but it's a different one. Okay, so this is indeed the one that we want. Uh, and it's called screen text. So let's go back here, screen text. And this time it is public. So screen text equals get a field of text mesh comp. This time we need to remember to say that it's public, but we can also get the... Um, value straight away because it's assigned by unity so it'll already be there so um here where we want the font the font is just going to be screen text dot font and the font texture i guess is just hang on every text mesh comes with a mesh renderer and that one has the material here so i'm going to say we want screen text dot uh, get component mesh renderer dot that that was not successful dot uh, material and it's that can be shared material it, this is complaining okay it's complaining be ah material I want the font texture so let's get the texture from here you know I'm curious yeah, no, this this doesn't let you just go dot texture. So yeah. Okay, so I hope that this will work. And if not, then who knows, we will deal with any bugs that we will find. So let's recompile souvenir. Let's also make sure that I'm subscribed to that. Although I'd be super mega con um, surprised if I'm not. Turns out I am because it's I a great module. I forgot to implement the solve counter. Thank you. I forgot to. Oh, don't forget to ink save. Um, wait a second, I did ink save right here. So uh, thank you for pointing it out, but it turns out I did not actually forget that. Uh, would you com consider implementing 00 support for the stars? In its current state before the upcoming update, it still hides the screens upon solve. Yes, Vinko, 00 is definitely a candidate, so why don't we just uh, add that to our list right away? And just to make sure that I have all of them on the wheel, I'm just going to copy and paste that right here. Okay. Um, where were we? I suppose this should really be here now, uh, because, you know, I'm obviously not going to uh, give up on this. I'm just going to finish it. Okay, so we compiled this, so I can just run the module now. And while this is loading, I'm going to take care of this, because this kind of bothers me that it outputs a warning. See, in time mode, we have recently introduced a new feature where Souvenir can award points for every correct um, uh, question asked. So I'm going to look at this number here. It's 649, and I'm going to say pragma uh, warning disable, and then enable. Uh, 
Is it called restore? Yeah, it's called restore. There you go. Okay, so now it should no longer uh, uh, warn about that field. Okay, so we have a uh, sink. That one. Souvenir. And I don't think we need these. Okay. I'm sorry, Dave. I cannot defuse that. Okay, stage one is this. Uh, let's open the log file. Uh, expecting number one zero in base four. Okay, maybe it is 10 and I needed to convert it to base four myself. Okay, so uh, we will probably find that Souvenir will ask about the first word before the strike, which it shouldn't. So let me take a screenshot of all of them so that I will be able to tell which one it did ask about. Okay, so now let's take a look at the log. I probably, uh, there you go, expecting number six. That proves that it's not in base four. So I need to convert it, which means it's one, two. So one, two, submit. And now we have our second. Uh, that is 11. Okay, this is, I'm gonna put stage two here. 11 is eight plus three. So that, that, thank you. And now I notice that we actually have four stages and not three. So there is another bug. So this is four plus three, so one, three. I did not take a screenshot of the third stage, goddammit. Um, okay, so finally we get this. Expecting number nine, which is eight plus one. Uh, yep, that should do it. Okay, we got an error, which is absolutely 100% what I expected. Uh, filtered log, souvenir, let's see. Bingo, index out of range, yes, because there are four stages. So um, uh, let's go back to the sync handler, which is right here. Okay, this needs to be an array of size four. Um, let me check about this, because uh, when this goes stage plus plus, where is this done? Ah, see it says less than three, which means that it can go up to four. Right, so, um, yeah, so this is correct. So when curve stage is still equal to two, wait, hang on. What? What? Hang on. I'm confused by this. Um, oh, I see. This is before the increment. Then it will increment to this. I see. Okay, so stage will never actually reach the number four. That is annoying. Why does this say stage plus two? Hang on. This is weird. Um, take a look at this. Oh, I see. It's because it does this logging before it does the increment, because this is what does... No, this does the increment. Right? Yeah, this increment stage, which means that after this, stage will have the value... If stage has the value 3, it will handle pass. So why... How are there four stages? Given that it says plus 2, does that mean that stage starts with the value negative 1? Um, no, it clearly starts with zero here and it's never assigned anywhere else. Okay, I'm really stumped by this. Um, I really hope that this source code is up to date. Okay, uh, if anyone has any ideas, please let me know. Um, yeah, you say zero index, but, you know, like, three is still three like when the stage number like if it marks itself solved when the stage reaches three then it will only have gone through zero one and two which is three stages um okay so let's let's think about this on submit if correct do this and then this will 
Oh, this increments the stage number after 0.15 seconds. I see. Okay, so this is still the old stage number. That's why it says plus two. Gotcha. Okay. So that means we do actually want to wait for stage to reach the number four. Um, but then again, it never... W no, it will. It will, because this will still increment it. Um, this... Ah, I see. So when, when it's solved, then this will all happen first. It will call the handle pass, and then some 0.15 seconds later, the stage number will increment, and then Souvenir will pick up on that. That is totally fine. That is absolutely great. Okay, so, um, I believe, therefore, that, um, okay, so this can be a 4. No, it can't, can it? Yes, it can be. And I think I'm just going to say if the next stage is uh, 4, then we just break. Because for that, we don't want to add another thing. Which means that we can just make this a while true. Okay, so we check if that is the next stage. If it is equal to 4, then we break out. And if it is not equal to 4, but different from the current stage, then this happens. Okay. So now we also need to detect a strike. So let's see what the module actually does when you strike. Um, okay, I think I got a Discord message, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, okay, it doesn't look like there is an easy way to obtain the information when you get a strike. Therefore, I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to do this the way that I do it in, I uh, can't remember what modules I did this in, but I've done this in, in a few modules where I basically hook into the button press. So I'm going to hook into the submit button, uh, check the current stage number before the uh, button is pressed, and then check the stage number after the button is pressed. And if they are different, then you were successful. And if they are the same, then you got a strike, which means that I need to reobtain the information. Right, and we see here that after handle strike, it will immediately do the... No, not immediately, it actually waits. Oh, that is frustrating. Mm. No, actually, that's not a problem at all, because it means that I can just get the information just before it changes. Like, you know, when you press the submit button, we get the information, and then we let the submit bu button do its thing. And if you get a strike, then the next time you press the submit button, it'll just be overwritten. So that's what I'm going to do. So let's find the submit button. It's actually called submit button, surprisingly. And uh, var submit button equals get field km selectable comp that. And it is in fact public. Okay. So this will give us the submit button. And then we're just going to hook into the submit button by saying var. Um, Oh, hang on. I need to make sure I understand where exactly the on interact is added. This is added in init, which is called only once in activate module. So I have to wait for the module to get activated. So, um, right. So while not activated, that one yield return new, uh, you know what yield return null. Okay. So, after this is activated, then the KM selectable will be assigned. So I'm going to get my old interact handler from the uh, submit button. And then I'm going to set the on interact to a new. This is not working when I press it equals as fr frustrating. Okay, so I'm going to give that a lambda which will, um, you know, at this point, we no longer need to keep track of the stages. We can just um, obtain the stage number right here. So text IDs of uh, FLD stage dot get. So at this point, we expect the stage number to be between zero and three. 
Ähm, yeah. And then we just set that to the uh, fld text id dot get. Then we call the old interact and return its value. Okay, why is it complaining here? Use expression body. Oh, it's not complaining anymore. Okay. So, um, so what this will do, right, it, it, it will put the values into the text IDs array every time that we press the button, which means that when, you know, when you get a strike, it will put the value in there, but then later it will put a value into the same place. And so you end up with the one that was used last. So I think this is fine. And now we need to wait for the module to get solved. So I'm going to say, um, uh, unfortunately, there is no, uh, hmm, I, I don't think I can rely on. Yeah, there are multiple places where this is set to empty. There are multiple places where this is set to zero. So I cannot rely on any of these. So I have to use um, var solve equals false uh, module dot on pass plus equal pass plus equals delegate uh, solved equals true return. I don't I, I hope that false is the correct thing. Actually, I, I should probably be able to check this because there are very likely other modules where I've done this before. There you go. I've done it in the colored ciphers. And here I return false, and this has always worked, so this is what I'm going with. So, uh, while not solved, you'd return, oops, nope, not that, you'd return new wait for seconds point 0.1, and then increment the solve count. Okay, so this will just wait for the module to get solved, and in the meantime, this will get called every time you press the submit button. So once the module is solved, uh, this array will now contain the information that we want, and then we can just generate the answers right here. I am fairly confident that this will work. Uh, I guess we don't need these anymore. We're going to make some more screenshots once we run this. Let's go. Sorry to see you go, go Salt, but thank you for um, joining us. I, I know that you probably didn't hear that because it's been seven minutes, but that's fine. Okay. Um, um, yeah, James, how are you getting on with yours? Well, I, I sort of finished it, but, like, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> the logging isn't really descriptive enough for me to figure out what's wrong. Okay. It just says started processing, finished processing, and then it, okay. the module just a question to exhaust it. Right, uh, I'm, I will take a look at it after this. So, this one should not appear because I got a strike, which was intentional. And this one should appear because I'm going to solve this uh, uh, correctly. So let's take a look at the log file right here. That one, the word is pond. The expecting number is eight plus three. So that's a two, three submit. And then this is the second stage. And I'm going to get a strike on that. And this is the real second stage, which I'm going to solve. Number six, that is four plus two. So one, two. And then in this stage, I'm going to do this. Get a strike. Well, actually, you know what? I'm tired of getting strikes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go here. We have, ooh. I see, this is one of those special words. Okay, we're expecting the number two, so we're gonna type zero, two, there you go. And then this is the last one. Oh. Log file, show me that. Number 13, which is 12 plus one. And that is solved. What word was decoded from the screen in stage third? Th stage third. All right, let's quickly fix that. Um, we don't want ordinal, we just want numbers. Uh, oi. 
stop hanging. Right, let's remove those parentheses. Okay. Oh shit, I do need to uh, to string up those. There you go. Okay, now let's take a look at the logging again. So for the uh, stage third, <laughs> the word is wrecking. Um, right, this is not one of the stages where we got a strike, so I don't actually get to test it right here, but I will be able to see in the rest of the logging what other questions were generated by souvenir. So let's go here, souvenir, boink, boink, boink. Okay, I'm going to close the game. So what was displayed on the screen? Unfortunately, I can't really read this, so I can't really test um, uh, compare this with my screenshots. But the word that was decoded from the screen in stage first <laughs> should have been main. So let's take a look at this. It was font, pond, then we got the strike, and then it was main. And then for the second stage, it should be rhyme rather than maze. Let's take a look at that. And it turns out it is, in fact, rhyme. Okay, so the only thing left to uh, test is to make sure that the um, display, you know, that the font works. Uh, hi, hello, Progeon. Welcome to the stream. This is a bot account. I recommend this gets banned. Oh, this one. Oh, yeah, I didn't even see that. Um, ban. There you go. Thank you, Quinn. Um... Uh, how do I make you a moderator? Um, ah, Slash mod. mod yeah, it said mod. I just saw that just before I hang on. Can I literally just click that? You have added Queen West as a moderator. All right, do you want to be a moderator, Bagels? Uh, not Bagels, uh, Brawlbox, but Bagels too, if you want to. Sure. Uh, say something in the chat so I can click on you. Something, yep, there you go. It would be cooler if it checks the states. What states? I don't know what states you mean. All right, let's uh, create an abundance of souvenir modules and solve the sync. Uh, 10 is eight plus two. One, uh, zero, and another zero. Okay. Aha! Oh, look at this. This looks awesome. What was displayed on the screen in stage third? Yes. Okay, so this is exactly how it's supposed to look. And there we go. Now that works perfectly. So I guess I'm gonna keep that. Now let's also quickly recompile it and make sure that it actually says uh, stage three now that instead is... of stage third. I thought you fixed it. I did fix it, but I haven't tested the fix. I, I really do want it okay. tested. I should have compiled, you know, I, I could have tested both in one go and I just forgot to recompile. Which is unfortunate, but, you know, not, not a big deal. While this is loading, I guess I'm going to open the souvenir thing and brawl box uh, fetch. I haven't, like, done it. Okay, yet. yeah, please, please commit this to your fork. Um, I guess I'll... Forget it, Jake, it's Katane. <laughs> okay, we have our log. We're expecting the number four, which is um, one zero. Ten is eight plus two. Zero. Apparently that wasn't zero enough. Um, six is uh, four plus two. Oh. And another six, which I can just submit. Uh, right, now it says stage two. This is good. This is correct. What was decoded from the screen? Stage three. Yep. 
All right, are we happy with this? Yes. I am happy with this. Okay, so sync one, two, five, three, one, two, five, square bracket three is now uh, done. And now we are going to go brawl box fetch. Okay, uh, you did a merge commit. Uh, okay, please don't do I that. But to. yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, I will tell you how to fix that. But anyway, I'm just going to merge this one change. Um, maybe I should have committed my own changes first. Uh, this is sync one to five and multicolored switches. I totally forgot to submit that separately. So let's quickly do that. Multicolored switches stage, multicolored switches stage, and multicolored switches stage. That's that. Um, add multicolored switches. Commit that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I, I guess I'm going to stage that and all of that. Add sync one, two, five, three, commit. And then um, uh, silence a compiler warning. Commit and push. Okay, and now that we've done that, I'm going to uh, cherry pick this commit. Not check out, cherry pick. Uh, there it is. Okay, that is that. And we've got exoplanet. So uh, let's take a look at it. Reload everything. Okay, so I don't know how exoplanets works internally, so I'm quickly going to open this. Uh, thing, but let's also look at this exoplanets. Okay, so that's that. Um, do we make sure that this is correct? Yep, that is correct. That was reasonably easy to look at. Uh, what is the CS file? Let's take a look. It's that. Okay, that that is correct. Um, blah blah blah. This is correct. Target planet. Target planet. Get. Okay, so what values do we expect for target planet? Um, okay, it's going to be an index within some array. Uh, what is the size of this array? Three. Okay, so the target planet is going to be between zero and two. Is that correct? Uh, the target digit, I assume, is between 0 and 9. Um, yeah, I remember yes. that planet surfaces, there are nine or, uh, 10 of them. So yeah, that, so that is between 0 and 9. OK, now uh, it is. Inclusively. Pardon? Why no? Yeah. Yeah, it is included. This is inclusive. So yeah. OK. Uh, starting target planet. Um, it will be the same. Yeah. Um, so. Ah, I see. Or uh, it won't be the same answer, but it will be the same. S starting range. target planet is never assigned. So starting target planet is not something we can rely on. It will not. It, it will always be zero. This is a bug in exoplanets, but if it doesn't actually need that variable, then I guess that makes sense. Um, so let's see where target planet is assigned. Um, target planet. So in generate solution, which is called in start, we set target planet uh, to something. Um, Right, and then we have this this table ring thing. So table ring will also have the same value. So does target planet ever get changed afterwards? Yes, it does. There is a modify value. In fact, this will modify target planet. Will it also modify table ring? Um, Yes, unfortunately, it does modify table ring. Right, that means we cannot actually deduce the uh, initial st uh, starting planet. Oh well. 
Um, I'm going to message Tass about this, and she can just add the uh, assignment, and then we can revisit this. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you for your work, and it'll it'll probably come in handy at some point. Uh, but for now, I'm going to uh, reset back. I still find it peculiar that it didn't actually work, though. Uh, well, I'm sure you'll be here for my next stream, so if Tass has done the changes by then, uh, then I will let you know and we can revisit this. Uh, message Tass uh, to assign uh, starting target starting target planet. Well, this one. I'm gonna head out and have a shower before we go. Okay. See ya. Right, see ya. Thank you for your work. Alright, we're gonna remove exoplanets from the list for now and spin the wheel again. Asu, welcome to the stream. And we're gonna do IPA next, cool. Okay, maybe this was previously considered, but it's showing the symbols on Souvenir Smart. Surely the expert will save the English and retranslate to language for the diffuser, which would make the time to solve this way long larger. Um, well, Procyon, I, I appreciate the concern, but, you know, the design of Souvenir is really supposed to be to ask about what was on the module. So, in my opinion, this is thematic, right? This is in line with the design of Souvenir. Um, if Flax shows the images of the Flax module, makes the module images and plans the images of the planets, then there's no reason this module shouldn't show the display word. Um, there you go, Asu has, um... Basically, uh, summarize what I said. Those don't also have the option of showing the name either. Having both is the problem. Not having the symbols. Okay, so you're saying it should have only the symbols question. Um, unfair in cases. It's, it's interesting that you say that. I mean, there are plenty of souvenir uh, quest or modules where you might get an easy question or a hard one. Um, I'd be against flags having pictures or words, but it only has pictures, so it's fine. I see. I'm personally against flags having the images show up since there's no easy way to notate the flags. Just because there's no easy way to solve a module doesn't mean, you know, like... It's especially frustrating if it asks for an answer choice that wasn't correct, so you have to cross-reference every possible flag. Um... Well, if you're talking about the flags in the flags module, then, you know, there aren't that many and most people know what they are. So you can just say the name of the country. Um, speaking of symbol reliant modules. Okay. Um, yeah, the concern got retranslated to showing the words and the symbols on service battle should only have the symbols. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that is an interesting point. Um, I'm glad that you said that, though, because that means that all my effort of getting the font to work was not in vain. Um, uh, discard. Reload all. Okay, so the sync uh, underscore. Yep, there we go. So I guess we are not asking about the translator word anymore. Um, and get rid of that. Which means that we can now also get rid of this. And it still compiles. Very good. Okay. So let's go back to... Um, oh yeah, IPA. Let's see what IPA is all about. IPA, IPA, IPA. Okay, so in IPA we have um, a play button to play a recording of someone pronouncing a sound. And then you just have to press the correct button. So I guess Souvenir will just also ask... Uh, you know, which of these symbols was the right answer, or which which of them, you know, which sound was played. So, um, let's take a look at the source code for IPA. Assets.cs, uh, IPA.cs, there you go. Okay, so we're gonna have, um, the solution, that's an integer, uh, which is probably the index of a button rather than ah, sound present. That must be the one. Let's see where that is assigned. Uh, that is indeed, there we go. Cap, what is 
Uh, is that is that a constant? Ah, I see. It's because of the uh, mod settings that it's different. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so sound present. Um, right, so I guess I can close this. All right, let's go here and add IPA. Uh, H I on string IPA. Uh, what is the module ID? It's IPA in lowercase. And then we go here. Right here. M N O P. There you go. IPA. I think I want that written like this. I think this is what I generally did with abbreviations. No, I did not do that with Lego. So undo that. Uh, space process IPA. Comma. Um, private enumerable object. Am bomb module. Var comp. It's surprising that it's. Oh, there you go. I was about to say it's surprising that it still hasn't learned this, but it just took a while for it to appear. Okay, so this is still called IPA, isn't it? Yes, it is. So we just put that there, and then we want the um, sound present. So var sound uh, present uh, sound. Let's just call it sound index, I guess. Get int field com that um, is it public? No, it is not. And when is it assigned? Is it assigned during start? No. Yes. Okay. Generate answer. I'm guessing generate answer gets called again when you get a uh, strike, which means that I should actually get the value after the module is solved. Um. Yeah, so when you, there you go, module solved, let's get that. Bar FLD solved equals get component, uh, get component, get field, pool, um, comp this, and is it is it public? Of course not, but uh, yeah, it's not public, okay. Um, so while not FLD solved, you return you wait from seconds from one, and then um, um, uh, solved modules, module solved dot ink save uh, IPA. Okay, and then we do this get in field sound present get. And we expect that to be between 0 and 70 because the maximum cap is 71, which means this will give us at most a value of 70. And um, now I need to also know the character there you go symbols let's get this so var symbols equals now this is a static field right and it's a string array so um, I guess I'm gonna do this and this time we want comp.get type and the name is symbols and it is not public okay so we just get that and did I really not have okay fine validator uh, so I want this array to uh, not be null, obviously. I think that is already checked as a given. Um, you know what? The length of this, the author should be totally um, free to change the length of this. So I think I'm just going to get this. And then here, instead of 70, I'm going to say symbols.length minus 1, just to make sure that I can actually get the symbol. All right, now let's formulate the question. We're going to go up here. Uh, where does I go? H I M N O P. Here we go. I P A symbol. Uh, nope. Uh, what symbol was the correct answer in I P A? Okay, for this one we can do three columns. Uh, no, not that. Um, I guess zero, but we're going to have some example answers, which are like, let's say these, there you go. Yeah, this doesn't need any uh, formatting arguments because we don't have a curly one, you know, there's nothing here. So I think this is all that we need. So here we're just going to say, uh, add question for this module. The question is 
IPA symbol. The format arguments are going to be null. The correct answers are going to be a string array of, well, there's only one, which is symbols of uh, sound index, I guess. And then the, uh, the wrong answers are simply symbols. That should be it, right? I think we, we should be done here. So that was, that was extremely quick, I guess. Um, so I'm going to compile that and test it out. Make sure that I'm subscribed to IPA. There is a chance that I might not be. Yep, I was not. So let's subscribe to it and um, run it. Unrelated Mashematics is on the spinny wheel, and I think that got added. Uh, mashem yes, Mashematics was added. Thank you. So we can remove that. Um, when I added module listening, which module does something? Yeah. So actually, that doesn't need to be added to the manual either. So thanks for that, Procyon. That's very um, observant. Back on track, speaking to the souvenir philosophy, the English words don't appear on the module. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do agree with that. I mean, see, I'm. there are some modules where things that don't appear on the module are part of the question. Like, for example, um, in, in the colored ciphers, like blue cipher, it asks you for the received word and the response word. So in some cases where that is literally the only thing you can ask, well, actually, I suppose for blue cipher, that is not technically the only thing you can ask. You know, now that I think about it, it should really ask about the things that were on the displays, shouldn't it? Well, anyway, I'm rambling at this point. So let's go back to this. IPA with five souvenirs. Let's go. I claim that's this one. And it was. Right. Okay, so as you can see, the font is a little inconsistent here. It uses the souvenir font for the standard letters or letters that are in the font. And then for other letters, it, it just substitutes a completely different font. This is um, unfortunate. So I'm going to take a look at the IPA module. And I strongly suspect that it actually has its own font. Whoops, I meant to look at the source code. And it probably has a TTF file somewhere in fonts. It actually uses Korean new. Okay. So how do we best get this font by looking at IPA.cs? Um, and it has the button text. So I'm just going to grab the first button text, text mesh, and work from there. Okay. So process IPA. Um, our text mesh equals uh, get field. Okay, now this is an array field of text meshes, and the uh, target is conf. The name is uh, button texts. It is public, yes. So we get that, and we um, expect a length of four, right? So expected length four. Um, null is not allowed. Yep, this is all fine. And then we get the zeroth element of that. And then here, uh, oh, oh, I see. Um, okay, add questions, module, make question. There you go. So now we're just going to do this. And then I believe I need to do this. And now there is this overload. So the font is going to be text mesh dot uh, font. And the font texture is text mesh dot game object dot. Um, I don't need the game object. I can just get component directly. Yeah, this is definitely broken. Mesh renderer uh, dot material dot uh, main texture. OK, and then we close the parentheses. I think that should be it, but just for readability, I'm going to put that on a line. There you go. So it doesn't run off the right side of the screen. 
Okay, so let's try that out. Sometimes you bend it. The cycle family is another example, but that's just so much nicer to have in English than... Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really not sure what to think about people wanting it to be nice. You know, it almost... It always feels to me like people are just trying to avoid having a challenge, but at the same time, if everyone considers the challenge uh, frustrating, then I guess... All right, I was wrong. Yeah, uh, yeah. All right, now we have a bug. All right, let's go back to the log file analyzer and see what happened here. All right, uh, filtered log, souvenir. Okay, don't need any of this. Um. There we go. Abandoning IPA because collection field button text has length 9. There are 9 buttons. Why did I think it was 4? I'm stupid. Okay. So let's close that. Just recompile that. And um, I guess I want to look at this ping. Uh, it's just a ping for playing. Okay, that is recompiled. We can have Souvenir have a bit of everything. I yeah, exactly. One of the nice things about Souvenir is that it has variety. Speaking of variety, should Souvenir ask for the number that was displayed on variety? <laughs> Alright, let's try this once more. I'm not good at this. Uh, that's either this or this. Or this. Oh. That's this. Yes. Ah, another bug. Let's go. Filter log. The module handler attempted to use a dynamic font, but the corresponding question is not marked as answer type dot dynamic font. I absolutely forgot to do that. Um, so here we do answer type dot dynamic font. Wait, what? Why is it complaining? Right, it's because it's in the wrong place, isn't it? Uh, no, it's because, ah, I see. Right, okay, let's put this here and then say answer. Um, layout, type, it's called type equals that, there you go. Okay, so that should do it. So now we recompile this. And then when that is recompiled, we run the game once more. Yeah, not needy. <laughs> Sorry, Bagels, I'm sorry that you're so upset, not upset, that you're uh, sad about that, but the majority is quite against that, so. I could swear that was a sh and that's not on it. That must be this then, yeah, that's the only option. Okay, that works absolutely perfectly. That works brilliantly. I am absolutely happy with how this turned out. Okay, so this was the correct answer. Uh, this, this, and this. Ah, I misclicked. Alright, IPA is done. Okay, uh, people in the chat, do you want me to do one... Ooh, task thing. We've added multi... No, multicolored switches was... No, no, we did add multicolored switches. Um, it was module listening that was already on it. We added sync1253 and we added IPA and we ran into a problem with exoplanets testing because you have a field called starting target planet but that field is never assigned and so Souvenir cannot actually obtain the value of the starting target planet. But since you're here, Tas, maybe you can uh, decide or illuminate 
uh, which information on exoplanet would actually make sense to ask on ex on on souvenir. Um, so let me know in the chat. Uh, in the meantime, everyone in the chat, please let me know if you want me to do some more or whether you want me to wrap it up after we um, after we dealt with the exoplanet stuff. By the way, Taz, if you want to join the voice chat, um, could you add Stellar to... Oh, of course, I can add Stellar. There you go, Stellar is added. Uh, so Taz, I don't know if you're still here, but if you want to join uh, Nook, um, then uh, we can talk. Uh, where is Taz thing? Oh, uh, maybe you're already um, invited, I guess. And I'm really confused here. Why is task thing not in my list? Um, okay, you know what? Um, I've always wanted X-Ray to have souvenir support. Yeah, that is totally something we could add. So uh, X-Ray can totally go on the list. Yes. All right, um, it seems that Tasting has already disappeared again, which is unfortunate. Uh, I feel like I should know how to add support to C rule since rule already has it. Yes, uh, that would be great, Pro Procyon, if you could add that. Right, Tas, okay, so Tas, if you could join the uh, voice chat. Oh, you are, there you go. Okay. Hello, Tas, welcome to the voice chat. Can you hear me? Tas, are you there? Hello? You're muted? Yes, hi. Ah, uh, there you go. Okay, so exoplanet. So you know what I mean by the starting target planet not being assigned? Yes. Okay. I don't know why that's the case. And sure enough, I never assigned to it. I don't even know why I put it there and didn't assign to it. That's weird. Okay, so do you think it makes sense for a souvenir to ask about the uh, starting target planet? Yes. Okay. In that case, please. Because add that will video. almost definitely be modified at some point. Nice. Okay, so make sure that you add that field. And in the meantime, I'm gonna look at the rest of the code for exoplanets which uh, Brawbox wrote. So let's first submit the IPA which I added. Huh. Oh, I see. Yeah, we decided to remove this question again, so I guess I'm gonna stage that. And you removed what? So in sync one two three eight one two three one two five three, we initially made it so that it can ask either about the word as it was shown on the module or the translated version of the word. But then uh, we decided that it should only ask for the thing as shown on the module because one of these questions is significantly more time con consuming to answer than the other. Um. Okay, so um. Sync, commit. Okay, that is not helpful. Not on the live stream. Is there any way to cancel this right now and do it later? It's rather inconvenient for it to do it right now. Okay, so while this is going on, I'm... Oh, I haven't... Uh, I was gonna look at the exoplanets code, and no, I can't, because I haven't done the uh, cherry picking yet. Oh man, this is extremely annoying! It's funny how it says auto-pack in the repository in background, and yet it's doing it right when I'm, like, waiting for it, you know? I, I wouldn't mind it doing it, like, totally in the background while I'm not using Git. But it has to do it while I'm using it, which is exactly the worst time to do it. Doom, doom, doom. I suppose I can exit this now. God damn it, this is slow. You know, it's weird because Git touts itself as supposedly one of the faster 
uh, version control systems out there, but honestly, I'm not seeing any of it. This is incredibly slow and um, embarrassing. Okay, so add IPA. Oh, I do not actually want to push this just yet. Uh, let's go to souvenir. I want to merge this and this. So let's do that and put that here. F do that. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, right. I suppose I can push that now in case any of you want to look at it. Um, and then once I've pushed that, I'm going to uh, cherry pick the exoplanets thing. Okay, so Taz, have you done the assignment? Oh, I'm still opening Unity. Uh, no worries. Okay, let's take a look at the uh, code right here. Okay, this is what James wrote. So we get the target planet and target digit. We get the starting target planet and target digit. Um, the target planet is always between 0 and 2 inclusive, and the digit is between 0 and 9, so I'm going to do this. Um, star counterclockwise, okay, so that's either true or false. And star direction, okay, it's, yeah, gotcha. Um, if the star can only be two things, does that mean we'll have the first souvenir question with only two possible answers? Um, yes. Apparently, um, what does that look like? It would just be on the far left. Um, yeah, honestly, that this might very well be the first time that we have a souvenir question with only two possible answers. What do you think? Is that is, is that still a reasonable question? Even if it's a 50 50? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, we already have ones with three, so... Giant maybe? string. That is a good point, Procyon. Giant Wait, string. Wait, no, it's not. What? Oh, giant string is not even on Souvenir, so no. It used to be, but that was the color of the liquid, and that's not... That, that is more right. than two possibilities. Okay. So, are we removing that? Uh, it's a bit of a shame for um, James's work, but... Okay, let's see, what is position names? Ah. Why, why, why a dot to array on something that's already an array? I just don't get why people do this. Um, starting target planet. So position names is defined in exoplanets. So let's take a quick look at exoplanets. Just want to see what it looks like. Uh, assets.cs. This is the one. Uh, target names, no, position names, there you go, inner, middle, and outer. And, ah, this is why it wasn't working, is because static, and uh, James didn't take account of that. Okay, so, um, the target type is this, name is this, is it public? No, of course not. And then here we put our validator array uh, dot length not equal to three, then expected length three. Okay, so that's the position names. Uh, yeah, the target digit obviously doesn't need a name. Um, all right, let's take a look at these. Uh, we have, this could totally be two columns. Um, Ah, which direction was the star moving? <laughs> ah, I see, he added extra left, right, up and down just to fill up the space. But anyone who knows the module knows that it's always clockwise or counterclockwise. Yeah, okay, I hope that uh, James won't be too upset if I remove that question then. I guess that's yeah, nice to I, be. I think we can do without it. Yeah. Okay, so, what was the... Okay, he called it... Initial rather than starting. What does the manual call it? Starting. Right, yeah. In that case, I will change that. Um, the rest is fine. Let's put this here. Starting target 
planet. STD, come on. Starting target uh, digit. Target planet. Target digit. All right. So I guess we're going to be testing that right now. Okay, there are compile errors. Let's take a look at this. Uh, ah, yes, of course. This should say get in field. And this also. All right, build succeeded. So let's compile that. And then run the game. Now, <laughs> let, let's hope Exoplanet has good enough logging that I can just, you know, get the answer. I still haven't patched it. Oh, okay. But we can still test uh, some things. We just know that the... Um, we just know that the starting target planet won't work, but everything else should work, right? Um, should. So I is it still loading Unity? Like, um, no, I'm just... I was just... Um, well, right now I'm about to build it. Okay, I'm so supposed to... And my computer is slow. I'm supposed to press the outer planet on a 2, and that planet is tiny and moving fast. That yes. is very hard. I did it! Yes! This is so cool. I love that. Huh? Oh, I see. It was Exoplanets that did the do 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 do. So the starting target digit would be um, one. The final target digit is two. The starting target digit, that was a one. The final target digit. So it never asked about the planet, interesting. Let's uh, re reload this uh, log file and take a look at all of the questions that it generated. Um, yeah, it only it only generated the digit questions. It never asked about the planet. Right. So, um Why would that be the case? There are clearly four statements here. I'm so confused. I shouldn't have closed this. Ah, invalid answer. Oh. I see. It's because this is a uh, lower case that it didn't. Yeah. This is why that happened. Okay. Have you got it yet, Tas? Uh, Steam's opening. Okay. Uh, I legitimately plug in my USB controller whenever I have to input Exoplanet. Oh, because of game gamepad support. That's actually an interesting way around it. Could you do pictures of the three star textures that appear on the module and have the choices be images? You could. But it's hard. <laughs> All right, well, I guess we're going to do some more. So I'm just going to spin the wheel and see what we're going to do when Exoplanets is done. Or maybe even start with now. We have Encrypted Maze. We almost got Simon Signals there, which is a very, very new module. Uh, encrypted Maze. 
Ah, this is the one where, yes. Oh, I love this one. Okay, so this should ask about the shapes that were on the module, the, the shape features, the shape values, the positions, obviously, and whether they spun clockwise and counterclockwise. Um, so here we have the same problem, right? If you ask, okay, like, it should be pushed now. Okay, thank you. So here we have the same problem, right? If we ask, like, is the current position spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? Uh, wait a second. The current position is always clockwise. So actually, I shouldn't ask whether it's clockwise. I should ask, like, what was the, for example, shape value of the current position or the starting position? And then you know that you have to look at the clockwise one. I think I'm going to do that. All right, let's um, check out exoplanets. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take a look at this. I assume that the change is right here. Fix for souvenir. Thank you. Let's unsubscribe and resubscribe to be sure. And let's test the planet fixes. And here we go. We have exoplanets and five souvenirs. Let's hope one of them asks for the initial planet. Okay, here we go. Um, exoplanets is here. The final solution is press the outer planet on a four. Bingo. Um, it asks immediately as the module is still fading out. Maybe it should wait for the module to mark itself as solved. The thing is, it actually solves immediately. The rest of the animation is just flavor. Even the... Do -do -do -do? Like, this handle pass is called as soon as you okay. press it. Everything else happens seconds afterwards. Okay, in that case, we'll keep it like this. What was the starting target planet? Okay, so uh, the starting target planet is um inner outer ah um right so it is the initial target planet yep so outer was correct what was the starting yep that's out uh, misclick what was the starting target digit? What was the starting target digit? The starting target digit is four. Okay, so I just noticed something though. Uh, there are only three planets, right? But it seems here that uh, James added four answers to balance it out, right? But he called one of them middle and one of them center. He was probably thinking center refers to where the star is, and that's just always wrong. But, you know, mid center could be construed as meaning middle. So I'm yeah. not, not super happy with that. Um, none. How about that? I mean, that's not possible either. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's the point. There's only I three mean, possible answers, John. In 10 button color code in Sudoku, each one only has three possible answers, but they don't not show a fake one. Not anymore. Ten button shows a fake one, and uh, no, it doesn't. And so does snooker. No, it doesn't. Okay, I don't know what you're talking about. There are clearly four here, and well, I okay. I don't remember seeing see ever seeing eleven or whatever the other one is in game. The other one is yellow. Well, um, yeah, I haven't seen that in game either. It's always just three. Okay, uh, you're being quite absolutist. It's true that it was only three for quite some time, most notably while Andrio was maintaining Souvenir, and for some time after because, you know, I didn't realize that he changed it. But I changed it back at some point. So, um, let's just take a quick look at this. Um, all right, Snooker. First break, red, green, red, blue. One, five, ten. Uh, red, black, red, green. Eighteen, nineteen, twenty-two. Uh, red, brown, red, pink, red. One, 
five, six, thirteen. Now we have red, green, yellow, green. One, red, green. Four, six, nine, four, fifteen, and a frame. Okay, and then and a frame. Return button. The uh, okay. So apparently this is the answer. Blue, red, red, blue, blue, red, uh, green, blue, green, green. Next stage. Okay. Uh, green, green, red, red, blue, 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 green, green, green. There you go. All of them are four answers. Uh, snooker was, um, I don't even remember. Eight, apparently. And there you go. So, it does show fakes, but why? Why shouldn't it just show three? I just personally find it more aesthetically pleasing when it's balanced. When it shows only three, then there is a gap in the corner of the module, and I don't like that. Right? <laughs> Little dance. Alright, um... Okay, so let's move on to Encrypted Maze, I guess. Let's take a quick look at the source code and see if this is easy to do. This will be... Oh, this one says Shifted Maze. Uh... Okay. Um... Encrypted Maze. Okay, that's... Let's assume this is the right one. Okay, the Gold's reference table has a shuffled X and Y axis. Therefore... These arrays map each number feature onto a new coordinate. Okay. Ugh, I need to be more familiar with the module. I mean, I kind of know how it works, but... Um... Holds the shapes and the features, bingo. Alright, so this is what we want. Yeah, I'm gonna go with this. I believe that this is the only ones that we need. I, I'm very uh, impressed with the amount of comments here. This is very helpful. So this is a value from 0 to 4. So there are five different shape markers. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't quite tell me which value is which. But then again, why wouldn't it, wouldn't it be in the order in the manual, am I right? gonna be that surely so um, actually maybe it should just combine the two you know maybe it should just show the sprite you know it sh maybe it should show the same sprite that encrypted maze shows on the modules I think I'm gonna do that uh, I did not mean to do that I meant to uh, do that and go here and clone that encrypted um maze right okay git clone that encrypted maze that was already the default okay there we go let's open that okay and then here in souvenir module let's start by adding this here let's also close this by the way encrypted maze Okay, um, that, I guess. Okay, encrypted maze, 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 dot cs. It's called that, okay. Wait, that is not the right place. Uh, I need the uh, module type. So I guess I'm gonna keep this for later, but here I want that. Okay. Let's go to where it says encrypted morse and put this here. Can I close that? Thank you. Okay, so now we need this part, the uh, name of the script, of the class rather, and see if it has a solved thing. It does. Let's make sure that this actually gets set. 
Uh, it does, otherwise this, yeah, there you go, it does get set. Okay, so var fld solved equals uh, get field pool. Is it public? I doubt that it would be, but it is not. Okay, good. So while not fld solved dot get, uh, you return you wait for a second point one. Um, right, and then uh, module solved, ink save, uh, encrypt maze. Ah, hello there, DJ Hero, welcome to the chat. Uh, 10 button color code doesn't show fake, but it does now. Uh, you can just make it empty. Uh, well, then it would just be empty. I don't want it empty. Um, yeah, I like it too. Thank you. Um, okay. So, encrypted May script. Um, Right, I was going to get the sprites. Let's let's take a look at this, the uh, encrypted maze scene. Here is the module. Take a look at this. Oh, look at that. All of the sprites are right there. Uh, grid, I assume. Um, mesh renderer. Okay, these are just... These are text meshes with a dot character. That is very a very interesting choice. Um, that probably could be done more efficiently, I don't know. Symbol grid. This is what I actually want, right? So this is... These are also text meshes. Okay, so this actually uses a font. Uh, the font is Esri for Encry Maze. Okay, very cool. All right. Um... So in encrypted maze itself, like in the script, let, let's see what this uh, symbol grid thing, like, uh, let's see if that's uh, assigned anywhere. These are text meshes. Yes, they are the text meshes. Okay, so I can just grab the array here. Maze index is what it's called. Uh, maze index right here. There you go. So we're going to get um, text meshes, I'm going to call it, because maze index is a weird name. And that is an array uh, of the component. And it's called maze index. And it's public. Uh, and then we get that. And we expect the length of that. Wait, is public true? Right. And then we expect the length of that to be, uh, to be, to be, to be six by six, which is 36. Okay. And then we get number zero, which is just a random text mesh. Um, and that text mesh has a mesh renderer. Okay. So that will still work. So, uh, let's formulate a question. Let's go here. Uh, let's find something that starts with E. Oh, that's not what I... Oh, that is unfortunate. That example starts with E. All right, encrypted maze goes right here. Encrypted maze symbols. Souvenir question, which symbol, symbol on encrypted maze was spinning clockwise or counterclockwise? And we're going to do three columns, six answers. Um, no. And let's see what all of the symbols are. That, surely that should be somewhere in here. Bingo. Square, pentagon, o hexagon, octagon. Yeah, so it's going to be one of these characters. There you go. Let's replace all of these with nothing and all of these with nothing. Uh, replace all of that with nothing and all of these with nothing. And here we have an array. So that's all of the possible answers. And then, uh, right here, we're going to say type equals uh, dynamic font. And then we also need the uh, format arguments, which could be um, uh, clockwise or counterclockwise. And then obviously the, uh, hello, 
Okay, the group size is equal to one. Okay, so we have our question. And we're gonna add questions, module, make question. So for the clockwise one, uh, let's see, encrypt and maze symbols, module key, encrypt and maze, uh, format arguments, clockwise. Okay, so the um, actual field that we want is this one and this one. So we will need to turn those into, ah, we just use marker index and it helpfully tells us which of these is the shape. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, I need all four of these variables. Let's get all four of these. There you go. Okay, so I want um, this. Uh, so FLD uh, shape clockwise or counterclockwise and marker clockwise or counterclockwise. And then we just do that and put that right here. Now, does the shape ever change after the beginning, like when you get a strike? I need to check where this is assigned. This is assigned in calculate starting point. So let's see how often or where that is called. It's called in start. And that is the only place where it is called, which means that the starting point is never changed. Let's see if this variable is assigned anywhere else. It looks like it isn't. Okay, so we can probably rely on that being uh, constant. Okay, so after start, we're just gonna get all of these values. So we don't need these to be FLD. We just do this and we, yeah, okay. Ah, let's do that, dot get, semicolon. Now, we expect the shapes to be um, 0 to 5, uh, 0 to 4, apparently. Yep, there are five of them. Okay, so um, expected length, uh, wait, expect, no. This is an integer that should be between zero and four, right? These should all be, oh, come on, Visual Studio. All right, let's do this. Yeah, it's still not aligned. Okay, fine, I'll do it manually. Get in field. There we go. Okay, so that's the shapes, but the markers, um, Shape and then feature. Okay, I call it feature. This is between zero and five because it's, uh, uh, yeah, hmm, hang on, actually, wait. Oh yeah, there are six here. I totally didn't notice that this is only five and this is six. Okay, so that, that is pretty cool. Okay, now, the first question is going to be about the clockwise one, which is, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I need to get the, uh, uh, marker index array because that is going to give me the character from the font. So var marker um, characters equals this is a string array field. So I think I'm just going to get field string like that. Um, conf and it's called marker index for some reason. Uh, get this and we expect the length in the first dimension to be equal to five. But if it's not five, we expect the length five in uh, dimension one. Well, I'm going to put dimension zero because that's what it says in the source. Uh, get length one not equal to six. Expected length six in dimension one. Else null. Okay. So that will give us the marker characters. And then here I can literally say the correct answer is just going to be the marker character of, well, it's the shape first, isn't it? Yes, it's the shape first, so shape clockwise and then marker clockwise. Um, and of course, 
Right, I already have the list of characters here, so I don't need to do anything else. Um, there you go. You know what, actually, I'm going to... Okay, this is actually a tradition that has gotten kind of by the wayside. I should totally make the other marker character for the counterclockwise one be um, the preferred, one of the preferred wrong answers. Okay, so that, close parenthesis. So for the counterclockwise one, uh, this should be CC, this should be CC, this should be CW, this should be CW. Okay. Why is this? Oh, apparently I capitalized that Charlie, that is interesting. Um, okay. So that is that done. Let's see if that works out of the box, shall we? Let's go back to Souvenir, recompile that, make sure that I'm uh, subscribed to this. Turns out I'm not, which is a shame. I've played this module three times on Twitch Plays and I still didn't go to uh, um, subscribe to it. All right, so with that done, we now run the gate. Game. What is this? The variable text mesh is assigned and star direction is assigned but never used. Okay, so one after the other. First of all, the star direction one is from exoplanets. So I'm gonna remove that because that variable is never used and that is also never used. So that can go away. And the other one was um, text mesh and that was in 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 uh, encrypted maze encrypted maze uh, so the reason this is never used is because well it's a dynamic font question so i need to specify the font right here so text mesh dot font okay and then text mesh dot get component this is so broken. KM selector, not KM selectable, it's a mesh renderer. Uh, mesh, uh, which is really a material, uh, dot main texture. Right, and then all of that goes here as well. And then we recompile that. All right, so after this, I guess um, we will have added like five um, new modules to Souvenir and oh, six apparently. Well, seven, we, yeah, seven because exoplanets we've taken care of and uh, you didn't see me do, do those. Well, actually it was James who did those. You didn't see James do those first too. He did that before the stream, but we're still going to add those to the um, manual afterwards. Okay, so let's do encrypted maze. Here we go. Let's hope that this allows me to uh, quickly find an answer here. Maze numbers, maze nur seven. Uh, maze number seven. Uh, so that is in reading order. So I hope that is. Um, uh, one based. Uh, your starting position is 3-5 and it doesn't tell me if that is row column or column row. And it doesn't tell me if it's zero based. All coordinates are logged as x, y with x and 1, 1, y. Okay, it logs everything. I'm extremely impressed. That is very, very, very diligent. So the starting position is 3-5, which is here. And the uh, goal is on 4-2 which is here, um, and that's it, right? So I literally just go up, um, right, right, up, uh, right, up, up, right, down, left. I absolutely love how the symbols change as you move because that way the module is always perfectly solvable no matter what state you're in. I wish more modules did that. Which symbol was spinning counterclockwise? I did not actually take a screenshot. Um, 
So let's see, the counterclockwise one is a thin-lined pentagon. So this one, I guess. Ooh. Yeah, it is a bit misaligned. That's unfortunate. Did I... Did I just click the hexagon after I literally said it's the pentagon? Okay, this is... Ah, I see. The counterclockwise one was the thin-lined, but the clockwise one is the thicker one. Which is also a pentagon, apparently, yes. Okay, so counterclockwise thin. Alright, this is working perfectly. So, let's now move our attention to the manual, which is right here. So, uh, let me just very quickly check whether my code here um, automatically sorts them alphabetically. I've forgotten whether I did that. Yes, I do do that, which means that I can just add them at the top. Uh, and here we go. Let's start with encrypted maze because I just did that. And as I say that, I just realized that I need to... Oh, why did those get changed? That is very strange. Why did that get changed at all? Okay. I think I'm going to undo that. Because I don't need those changes. Um, exoplanets. Yep. Yeah. All right. Submit this. And this. Uh, how did this happen? Hang on. Oh, I see. It's probably because James did an auto format which would have removed the space, yeah, because the default is not to have a space there. Yeah, okay, I see he did all of that. In which case, um, it is probably easier if I uh, submit the encrypted maze first. So let's unstage this again and stage just encrypted maze. Um, that, that, and this. Okay. Um, encrypted maze. Uh, there's a new version available. Yes, thank you for telling me right in the middle of me using this software. Um, okay, and this is all exoplanets fixes. So, exo uh, commit, yes. Um, and then let's uh, see the souvenir, do this, and uh, merge those two. Um, I guess I do want to reword this because it no longer needs fixes. So add exoplanets. There we go. And now we have that. Add, add. Okay, and hopefully this no longer... Oh, this is why this changed. Okay, I do oh, wow, all of the okay, I do want to get rid of that. So I guess I'm gonna so first of all, I'm gonna delete those files. Um, which is really just these. Uh, and also these. Uh, no, I don't. You know what? What am I doing? Yeah, I can I can do this better. All right, so first of all, undo this. Okay, uh, we have no pending changes. So here's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna go to here and do uh, this and I'm just gonna swap the order of those two like this and now I can go here and reset the branch with mixed and that will put all of those changes back into my uh, um, you know thing here so I can just revert this delete these and um, this is all good and this is all good so now I can just say add exoplanets by brawl box gaming because now the commit will no longer be attributed to him so I want to give him credit in the description okay so far so good I guess I can submit that uh, now let's take a look at the manual so encrypted maze wants to know um, which symbol was spinning which way? 
Right, then the next one after that is um, inner connections made by Brawlbox. So let's see, inner connections. Uh, what color was the LED? And uh, what was the digit flashed in Morse? Okay. And then after that, we have placement roulette, where the question is, right, placement roulette, um, what was the character listed? Was the drift type listed? Okay. Yeah, okay, this is quite extensive, but it's really cool. Um, let's see. What were the character drift type, uh, track, track type, vehicle, and vehicle type listed? Question mark. Right. Next one. Uh, the next one is um, multicolored switches. Uh, which is here, multi oops, multicolored switches. What color are you? Um, okay. What were the colors of the LEDs in both cycles? Let's, let's write it like that. There you go. Next one, uh, we have sync one, two, five, square bracket three. I believe there is a space missing here. Uh, what was displayed? Uh, what was displayed on the screen, I guess? Uh, I think that is what I think one, two, five, there you go. What was displayed on the screen? Yeah, uh, in each stage. Okay, then we have IPA. What was the correct, uh, the correct answer or the correct button? What should I call it? Um, IPA button, IPA answer. What did I call it? Um, show me this. There you go. Symbol. Ah, right, what was the correct symbol? I'm I'm just gonna phrase it like that. And then we have exoplanets, which I still haven't added. Uh, what were the initial and final, um, or rather the starting and final uh, target, planet, and digit? And that is for exoplanets. Now, let's open Chrome, open this manual, which should be here, and uh, run this code. Okay, so right now you'll see exoplanets, IP, etc. They're up here, but now if I refresh this page, exoplanets is now in its correct place and uh, sync is right here. And we are now uh, down to, you know, like, okay, so we, we used to have like, okay, let me, let me just see what it used. There you go. So it's about two more extra lines of... All right, so let's create a PDF for this which goes here, so the near manual PDFs modules that, yep. And then recompile souvenir because it is now uh, bundled with the new manual. So this can now be commented out again. Um, and then these are done, so I guess I can remove those. And uh, encrypted maze. I, uh, I, I did that. Why is that still in the list? Okay. So with that, um, I guess we're done here. We are now going to, uh, first of all, this here, update manual, push that. And then when that is done, let's open uh, the uh, contain content where we now have, ah, okay, I had some typo fixes here. So let, let's do this one first. Uh, ooh. Ah, okay. I actually forgot to update the HTML with the with the with the modified version. So let me quickly do that. Run this again and uh, view page so not page source. Inspect element. Uh, grab this. Uh, copy outer HTML, and then we copy not copy. We select everything from here to here and just paste. Close this. 
um, and go here. And now you will see that if I stage this, all of these are now the encrypted maze is now inserted in the right place. Factory maze was moved to the next page. That is reasonable. And then more and more things as you go down get moved to the next page. Um, yeah, okay, so this is all really, really cool. And that should not be active anymore. So let's uh, comment that out again and stage that. All right, uh, souvenir manual update, commit. Um, someone pinged me. Okay, it's just one of those looking to play pings. Um, okay, some typo fixes, I guess. Commit and push. Uh, push, pull with rebase, I guess. I, I guess that means someone else made some other changes since the last time I committed. And indeed, the troll is marked as solves as an end. Okay, that makes sense. There is a clarification in Simon's Ultimate Showdown. Oh, yes, because it doesn't reset the input. Uh, yeah, the sequence will flash again, but the current pro presses will not be cleared. That is what the clarification was. And finally, being boozled again is now a completely different thing, and it's been nerfed. This is cool. All right, so here's our souvenir stuff. Now we can update the... Wait, why are there still one? Oh, it's just a shader thing. Okay. Now let's update this. Okay, so we added. What did we add? I shouldn't have removed this. Okay, so we did all of these plus encrypted maze. Uh, encrypted maze. Okay, let's sort this. Um, and let's put the ones that James did first. Okay, and then we do this. and put the space in here. Okay, so this is the list of things that we've added. Uh, added support for that. Um, I'm gonna say thanks to Brawlbox Gaming, open quote. Uh, oh, not open quote, I meant exclamation point. And then I'm gonna say major update. Okay, finally, after a long, long time, we have another souvenir update. The last time that souvenir was updated was uh, in August. And wait, that is 10 days, uh, five days ago. Oh, I see, this was just minor fixes. The last time that we added a new uh, module was... Oh, look at this. None of this is adding a new module, so it's further back than July. Um... All of this is just fixes. There we go. Wait, oh, again, only fixes, minor fixes. Okay, Simon Shouts was added. That is the last time that a single module was added and it was only in one, you know, not bunched with other modules. So 17th of May. That, that is too long. We need to do this more often. So please, people, encourage me to do this more often. I would love to do this more often. I would love more modules to have souvenir support. And I would love for you guys to watch me do this because I enjoy that. Okay, uh, thank you very much for watching. I guess we're done here. Um, we can close this, we can close this. Um, oh, I totally forgot to see the um, newest change. There we go. Nope, that's still not there. Oh, that didn't go through, did it? Did that really not go through? Or is, is Steam just being bad? You know, just to be sure, I think I'm going to submit it again. Uh, added exoplanet thanks to Roblox Gaming and these Timway. So this is a major update. Uh, added, uh, whoops, added support for. Let's do that. Okay, so let's do this again. Okay, so I think it's just not coming through. I think Steam, because uh, Steam had some issues yesterday and earlier today as well. So I think they're just um, having trouble right now. So I guess I'll upload this whenever I can. And once again, thank you all for watching. And I hope that I will see you again some other time when we're going to do another souvenir module 
support run. See you guys.